topic today is uh, end user customizable business rules and workflows in multi tenant dotted applications let me briefly talk about the need for this kind of uh, business rules and workflows specifically in uh, multi tenant applications developer centric workflow engines and business rule engines are quite popular very complex business rules and workflows can be created by developers and incorporated in dotnet applications but if you want that to be multi tenant and you also want the business some of the business rules and workflows to be customized by a non it person let's say let's say the leave management workflow has to be customized by a hr manager or a performance appraisal system workflow being customized by a, a administrator etc then it becomes a little more challenging to to be able to provide the flexibility for the end users to customize the workflow or the business rule remember that information uh, in the context of who which tenant customized what and then during run time we need to apply that customization of the business rule or workflow so that the application behaves differently for that particular tenant users even though all along we have been maintaining a single code base so this is the uh, uh, challenging business requirement that comes up in many uh, saas applications it also comes up in many bpo applications and kpo applications that requires multi tenancy because they deal with multiple customers and they have to configure some of these aspects without having to go to the it for changing the code so we are going to look at a few case studies today where this kind of business rule workflow customization was implemented using the texelo uh, platform of course uh, very briefly texelo platform is not just for business rules and workflows um we will talk about it a little later but this business rule customization and workflow customization is just uh, one of the various components available in the texelo development platform it is not the uh, only thing but it is just a couple of components that are there in the texelo platform there are many more components and many more features but today's webinar is focused only on the business rules and workflow components so what uh, sikova which is actually a us based hro they they are in the business of benefit administration services for fortune 500 customers uh, they had uh, millions of uh, employee records thousands of concurrent users um, different customers having different requirements even the same customer who is operating in multiple states in the united states have different insurance providers different medical claim providers different pension providers and employees might change from one branch to another branch and the plans the benefit policies all this have to be changed or configured uh very frequently and and the organization's policies internal policies in terms of eligibility criteria all that varies widely so it's a very very complex business scenario and the platform that they had which was about 10 years old uh was taking about it was taking about 3 to 5 months or 3 to 4 months to set up a new customer or every time there is a change they have to go back to the it and it took, took about a month or so to implement the change so what they did was they decided to completely build a new application or a new product they are not a software company selling products but they are a services company hro company but it's more of a platform for their internal use which is also used by their customers and the employees of their customers because the employees have to um employees have to opt in to certain plans at the end of the year so all the employees would log in to the system from their desk and select the plans for the year etc 
so the whole uh, system was built on top of the Texelo platform and and one of the most widely used or most uh, extensively used feature of Texelo in this application is the business rule engine because the entire crux of the product is the benefit plan administration and the ability to configure it for different customers in different states and different employees. Because of this today uh, they are able to uh, set up a customer in three days instead of three months. They are able to scale out and they are able to handle thousands of concurrent users by scaling up and scaling out the uh, application, both the application and the database. And non-IT operational people are able to uh, make fine-grained changes to the system without depending on the back-end IT. The second case study is a uh, US-based KPO. They do a lot of categorization of retail products. They, they get data from a lot of e-commerce sites and, and retail chains, websites of retail chains and retail customers. And they do categorization of these products. And there could be a hundred thousand records or million records which have to be categorized. And there are certain automated algorithms and workflow processes that have to be followed for categorizing these products. And in between some of them could be manual steps which, which a back office uh, executive have to uh, take a decision and decide to categorize it. And this workflow itself could, needs to be customized not only for every customer but within the same customer there will be multiple projects and it has to be customized and should be customized by the business people, the back office personnel. And, and they also had a requirement that thousands of these workflows have to run separately and parallelly and simultaneously like 10,000 workflows running at the same time. So they need to be cloud ready, scalable and, and, and elastic. The, the whole design has to be like that. So here again this Texelo platform was used for this application. So we are going to show some sample screens from these projects today. And we are also going to show you uh, a sample application that we use for training uh, in inside Visual Studio uh, through a code walkthrough where my technical team is available today to show you that so that you can get a deeper understanding of how the various classes and the APIs of the Texelo platform are used during development by your developers for achieving this business rule workflow implementation, development time and end-user level customization during runtime and how they are coupled together. So as I said, the development platform that was used was Texelo's stack and there are a lot of components in that that come standard out of the box and this custom business rule builder and custom workflow builder are one of the components. And when you build an application using the uh, Solosa stack, uh, you will be able to host it anywhere, right from your on-premise Windows SQL box to a virtual machine in a data center to Amazon or Azure or private cloud. So it's, it's, it's a standard .NET application that you get. And the runtime remains .NET. We don't create an application server this is not a cloud platform, this is not PaaS. This is a simply a development platform or a framework which you use during development inside Visual Studio. So it gives you complete freedom, flexibility and control without the complexities of reinventing these engineering capabilities. So this is a sample screen uh, on business rule customization uh, where the employee coverage is being defined uh, you see a lot of variables have been exposed by the developer which is which is which used by the end user to configure the policy or coverage policy. Similarly, the plan settings, various conditions are supported in the business rule. So all these are easily understandable by the non-IT domain person. If, if the HR executive is doing it, they will be able to understand and do it. This is because Whatever complex internal uh, classes and API that you use, they are all exposed through a domain model uh, to the UI where the user can easily understand and configure the system to suit their requirement. This is another example of how uh, customization is done.
this is the end product this is not texelos uh, feature but this is the feature achieved by the sikova benefit administration system using the texelo platform which is underneath okay the the other screen that you seeing now is the workflow customization sample here again the the basic blocks the start manual auto all that is provided by this by the selosa stack the activities that you see on the left hand side these are domain specific product specific activities that your developers will create using normal c sharp code and then those activities can be plugged into this workflow which 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 my technical team will show you in a short while okay so i'm going to stop here to see if there are any questions so far and then i will transfer uh, the presentation uh, presenter to uh, elias elias is our uh, technical evangelist with texelo uh, he is going to demonstrate uh, a live application for both the business rule and the workflow and he will also take you inside visual studio to show you some sample code on how the usage actually happens before that any questions till now if you have any difficulty in seeing the screens or uh, or listening to the audio please uh, uh, mention that in the chat window or the questions window so that we can help you okay so i'm going to transfer the presenter to elias who is a panelist hi everyone yeah, this is elias elias tech evangelist thank you very much ram for your elaborate and uh, about the technical stack of uh, Texelo and giving a business case example for us to understand it clearly. So uh, I'm Ilya, tech evangelist at uh, Texelo. Today we are going to see about how the business rule engine works with Hello Test framework. So on the whole, business rules and validation engines is an important part of any application. There could be a lot of logical validation or form validation, you know, any kind of uh, validation that has to be happened on any kind of domain based application. Be it uh, form validation like uh, when we register a form there could be validation to check how the mobile number is or is there a proper email address before submitting the record into the database. Right? There could be different uh, type of uh, logic here. So, uh, the two types, two main business logic or business rule validation here is either we check if then else condition or we will have a multi rule validation condition. So the, the if then else condition we all know. So uh, we will uh, get started immediately. So this is the business rule engine screen that you get as part of uh, Cellotex framework. So I'm going to show you how to create a simple if then else condition business logic. So here it is. I'm going to create a business rule on an entity called user. So there are different fields on the user entity. Uh, something like created on, created by, updated on, updated by. So I'm just creating a simple logic on the updated on page on field and I'm checking if the updated on field is June 14th and I can handle, I can build one more and structure and then have first name of that user should be admin. 
if it adheres and I will execute the then condition. I would say or uh, maybe. Say this, I would set as follows. the requirement, understand the need of the business logic and then change it. So there is a big cycle. Instead, the business rule engine facilitates the business user to just change the validation rule as and when they want. And the beauty of the validation or the business rule engine is you change it on the fly and there is no deployment. So once you save any kind of validation here, this will be consumed on the application on the fly again there is no you know there is no deployment on the fly and it be validated before submitting the uh, data inside the database or while updating or deleting any kind of validation we have and n number of validation for a single field is possible so that is a basic if else condition validation tool and then let's move, move on to um, uh, Elias one second yes Ram yeah, I just want to clarify here that the sample that we are showing here is a simple uh, training uh, use case that we use for training developers on how to use a business rule engine where we had used it for validating a, uh, a, a form uh, field. But then there could be other complex business rules that you might be using in your um, business logic which could then be exposed to the end user which is what I showed you in the Sikawa case. But for the training purposes, we are showing you a simple uh, use case of uh, simple validation. You can go proceed the ideas. So we, correct. So this is the validation tool that I was discussing about a little bit before. So this is the validation tool. And we have a pre-processor rule. Uh, that is what Ram is talking now. So uh, this is a basic rule or validation logic. We can have n number of validation logic. And it is, you know, uh, uh, it doesn't have any relationship any field. You can have any global business rule. And almost all the business rule will be based on entities and fields again. So I'm going to show you again a same if then else condition here also. And this preprocessor rule will get executed after the validation or before the validation. You can have any kind of or any type of usage business rule. It is not part of validation, but it again, it's a validation logic. For example, uh, uh, in a basic web application, once the user logs in, we may display him an offer. If it is an e-commerce application, we might give him some offer. Based on the usage that he has done in the past, we may give him uh, some offer based on his age, or based on his usage, or based on his any, any kind of pattern. So we may validate the field here again. Let's say I uh, have an address ID column, address ID field in a user table. So I'm checking if the address ID is something like Chicago. I I give him. Okay, let's let's assume status as a description field, and I I might give him some 60 percent or 70 percent. So any kind of business logic rule can be built again. In the same website, we might give him, we might uh, uh, welcome him 
like a good morning or good afternoon or good night based on the time that he logs in. So these are all the normal pre-process and post-processor rules that we can build, uh, you know, based on the domain. And again, it is not any domain specific. It is completely, you know, uh, uh, it, it can be used for any domain. So these are pre-process and validation rules. And we will jump into table valued business rules. taking a while ago. Okay. So uh, not all the business will have the same if then else condition for validation as well as you know business logic. There could be scenarios to validate against multiple rules in a same you know same set of fees. For example I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, all I'm taking a little time. Trying to open a multi value condition here. Okay, so uh, the, the second, third rule that I want to discuss about is a table valued pair. For example, uh, we can have or we can append multiple rules uh, for a business case like uh, if a, if a certain person age falls against uh, 10 to 20, we might give him a, a different rule set or a cell set. If he falls under 30 to 40, he, we might give him a separate you know, a value back to him. So a certain condition has to pass through multiple rules and if any of the rules you know, satisfy him, then we will result back or return back an appropriate value. So that is what a multiple rule business rule engine. So we saw three things. One is if then else condition, and then we we saw pre-process rule, and then we we, we also saw how uh, uh, multiple business rules can be checked against, and that is if satisfied, we will return back you know, appropriate value or appropriate result back to the calling application. So this, this is also one second. This is actually also called as a decision table type of a business rule, where you have multiple columns of information and then find that the last column is is the uh, is the is the output that you want to uh, return and you want to say that if this is true and that is true and that is true you would have four different columns of information and multiple rows it's more like a matrix decision table matrix so if that decision table matrix is way one way of configuring a business rule whereas if and else is another way of configuring a business rule yeah you can proceed there yeah. we can go to the, probably the workflow part That's wrong. Okay, so uh, let's quickly see how to create how to create a, a business rule engine uh, using our Telosaf. Okay, so we saw the rating activity. Uh, that is what I want to show you. So this is the decision table that uh, Ram was discussing. So we we have a, a, a this is a sample case for a built for a BPO application. Specifically, in BPOs, uh, employees will be rated against the number of customer they handle and the number of cases they handle specifically. So here, I have given a rating for the business people who for the employees who hand handle thousand cases for 200 customers. They'll be rated against A. And then if they handle 
500 and 100 customers they'll be given rating as B. So like this it, it can go and this should be handled by the business expert instead of the developer because every time there will be a change from the company perspective they might give or they might giving the rate, rating you know in different time of period they might change the number of cases, number of customers so this should be completely handled by the business expert instead of going back to the developer and say, asking for a change on the business logic. So this decision table facilitates the business expert to change the rule whenever they want and on the fly. So once they change it, it, it will get affected into the database and it will be applied on the same minute. And there is no deployment at the end here, so that is the biggest advantage. So I'm going to show you how to create a business logic rule in a Visual Studio using the Celosis framework. Okay, so here we discussed about the rating. Rating given to an employee based on the cases they attend and number of customers they you know talk to. So there are two two variables that that relate to the rating. So the total number of cases and the total number of customers they handle. So these are all the variables that will be shown on the uh, UI for the business expert to change. So these are all the variables that we have to create on the user activity. And we also saw some of the entities that get listed out on the if then else condition, the user table and the user rating input and output that uh, you know, will be returned to the calling application. So all these have to be registered while you create a simple business rule. So this is an update variable. You are passing the entity value to the variable which is getting populated on the UI. So you have to create an, a class with the business rule name and then you have to inherit from the activity base which is coming from the fellows as rules dot execution activity base which is a, a, a DLL which is coming from a DLL when you inherit when you copy those DLLs uh, which comes part of the fellows framework. So this is the basic class that you create for any kind of business rule. And again we have a configuration before getting into configuration we will see what are the rating rules. So there are uh, enumeration types that are constant based on this the rating will be given. So excellent, exceptional, value, performer and newbie. So if there are any additional values again the developer can extend it, change it on the development side and incorporate in the business rule. So this is again a class. Uh, so these are all the attributes. This is the name of the rule and whether it is a decision table or if then else condition and then there is a user rating rule which is uh, given to as a name and then description of the rule. So these are all the standard structure that uh, a developer has to follow when they inherit uh, creating a rule from the fellow rule base. And finally once they create a rule they have to submit those rules to the fellow safe framework only then these rules will get displayed on the UI for the business users to use it. So this is the connection string and the, the connection that gets followed and then we are creating the mapping. The mapping actually does coupling the business rule into the Celosis framework. So this is how we just create a simple business rule. And how so the, the overall... Elias, you should also show where exactly is used in the actual form somewhere. No, the, the business rule is getting executed. In the, in the grid somewhere, no? Based on the... Uh... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I got you. You can show the code part, yeah. Or you can just go into the code and show where it was uh, used. Okay, yeah. So these business rules get called on the controller. So since we follow a MVC pattern, all these things will be written as a controller. So here is where the rating is getting applied. 
So the apply rating will be called when the user submit or list out all the employees. So here the user rating rule that we created on the user rating uh, uh, web, web application or web project. So that is the, that is getting called here and it executes and we are passing some uh, result into it which is uh, uh, the user record and it returns it execute and returns some result back to the calling application. This is how a general uh, you know way of calling a business rule from the application perspective. Okay, so let's uh, so, let's uh, call the workflow. Okay, so still now we are seeing how the business rule engine works. I mean, uh, business. When we talk about workflows and business rule engine, it is actually decoupling the work of the developer and the business expert. Uh, uh, you know, experts. So we are trying to avoid the dependency between the expert and the developer. So whenever there is a change in the business logic or the validation rule, a business expert has to go back to the developer and make him understand what is the change on the business side and what is the you know effect if the old rule is still there on the application. So uh, again he will explain what, uh, what are all the changes, the developer has to you know, understand it and then change it on the develop, uh, application, test it and then deploy it again uh, as, a, as a business user he has to test it from his side. It is a very big cycle. So it is again a pain. So it is a decoupling of logic, application logic and the business application. It is two separate parts. So now we are going to see what is workflow. So workflow is nothing but a, depth, uh, a business logic. Ilias, one second. Uh, there yep. is a question uh, from, from one of the participants. I, I would like to answer that before we go to the workflow. Uh, the question is that is our rule engine based on Microsoft Windows workflow or any other third party rules engine? The answer is no. Uh, the business rule engine and the workflow engine that we are using in Texelo is, is built by Texelo. And uh, it is primarily built with the balance between developer development time flexibility and developer freedom and end user customizability, a browser based customizability and multi tenancy. So these three things have been uh, uh, we couldn't find a third party engine which, which does all the three. Some were developer centric, some were very user friendly but they did not give enough control for the developer and some were not multi-tenant. So we had to finally build our own business rule workflow engine inside Texero. But on the other hand, uh, you can you are still free to use the workflow foundation for your other complex business rules and workflows which are developer centric which you can use them as part of your application. What I mean is it can coexist or you, and it can even co-relate. So the, the, they can be coupled. The, the, the business rule workflow process of what you do in Texelo can be coupled with what, what inputs or outputs are coming from the workflow foundation. So it is interoperable and you can use it, continue to use it. But wherever, so what you will do is you will use our engine only when you want to customize some part of your business rule workflow by the end user. Only that part you will do use our engine. For the remaining part, you will use your workflow foundation. Okay. So now let's go to the workflow uh, engine. Uh, a brief UI demo, and then go into the uh, code base and see how it was actually used. Thank you very much, John. So now here we are seeing uh, the list of workflows for this particular tenant. So uh, a, a tenant can have n number of working published workflows with a different version. So let's quickly see how to create a workflow. Went to the creative screen. So this is a, a workflow designer or dashboard or canvas that is used to create an activity. There are certain tools on the left hand side uh, tools and then activities. Tools are the basic components which are given by Telosys framework to map all the activities or the business logic together and run it as in a single shot or a, as a workflow. And these activities 
could be any of your business logic. Uh, the business logic could be uh, as simple as sending an email or triggering and web service, calling a web service or uh, uh, you know inserting a record, deleting a record. It could be any any kind of object, and it is uh, you know not dependent on any domain. You can create uh, logic as part of your domain. Now, so and this is a jQuery based simple drag and drop driven workflow. So I'm going to start with start step. So this is the first. You know, drag and drop that you have to do to create a simple workflow, and we have two kind of workflow. You know, uh, thing. One is you can either have a completely automated workflow, or else you can opt for manual workflow, complete manual workflow. Or there could be some situation we have to collide both manual as well as auto feature and run it as a semi semi model. Okay. So now I'm going to create a simple workflow which is completely automated. So I start with the start step, and that is the router here, which which routes to the auto step. So this is a container which will actually contain your business logic. So this is uh, just assume it. This is a logic. This is your business logic. I'm going to copy or drag and drop into this container. So you start out, and then it it routes to the uh, a certain logic and then this will do some process and again this has to call another logic so i have to drop a container again i will drop some other logic and it will route the output of the first activity will be given as an input to the second activity and finally we can close it okay now Something here is called, called as router, which is again a component, which is called as decision maker. Let's assume we have a, a situation um, to decide. I mean, this activity does some work and returns some true or false condition, or it could be any kind of condition. It is not necessarily be uh, it should be true or false. It could be any condition. So based on that condition, we may need to route to F. Or it could be some advanced side. So again, route here. So it could be if based on the output of activity A. If it is right, uh, if it is true, go to right hand side. If it is false, left hand side. So this is a router or condition logic which redirects another activity. So this is how you simply create a activity. Here, the activity, as I already said, it is a business. Logic or any kind of work that you do as part of your workflow. So this workflow facilitates to couple everything as a single process, and it finally will help you to execute it. Okay. Now let's see what are the properties we have as part of the logic. Right. So this is the task detail. You you have to create a task code which is unique for each activity. So you have you should not give any space here, and you give a name. Uh, understandable name and then ordinal and then we have certain conditions here. So conditions are nothing but validation logic again. So before or to start this activity, what kind of validation we have to do? So task condition or it could be any code condition which is run inside the source code. I'll show you that in a couple of minutes and then we also have a store proc condition. Store proc condition is nothing but uh, a store proc will be validated again. And if the store prop returns true or any kind of you know result set, based on that we will continue to another activity. So or we will continue the process, or we will start the we will kick start the logic. So that is for the condition. Likewise, we also have to expire this activity. What are all the conditions? To ex to skip what are all this, and to override and to complete. There could be a lot of validations and uh, you know uh, actions that has to be taken. Like Ram said, we can also couple the business rule that we created separately using the cell of this framework. We can also couple it here. So we can also have, or we can also link those business rules into the workflow engine. So if there is a coupling or integration between a workflow engine as well as the business rule. So this is how we generally create a workflow or an activity. So these are all the Uh, 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 properties or attributes which is given by the developer 
to the uh, business expert to change it or to automate it on the fly whenever there is a change on the activity. And finally, we have something called outputs, outcomes and status. So for, for any kind of activity, that could be certain status or output. If not necessarily be always true and false, it could be any kind of business object. So here we have on this particular object or uh, activity, there are outcomes as started, shipped, routed, errored, executed, and expired or completed. So if any of the one occurs or uh, returned back to the calling activity, based on that, another activity will be called and then processed, taken forward. So these are the possible outcomes which is uh, given by the developers. Okay, now let's see, so this is how you generally create it. Now let's see uh, an already created or a working business example for, for our, you know, understanding. So this is, this is already active and I'm going to see it. Okay, so here the scenario is, this is a working uh, uh, workflow and the scenario actually is, we receive, the BPO company receives a lot of records. These records have to be, you know, allocated and then verified and processed. It has to go to QC and there could be some manual QC check quality check and then finally it will be handled to the client for his check again. So it is, it is completely a manual process and a and, and little bit of automated process also. So the start, the start step starts the application or the execution and it, it checks whether the, the, the given input can be done automatically or you know manually. So this decides whether to go left hand side or right hand side. So the right hand side is the direct, you know, this, this process the whole record and directly given to the client which is automated. If not, it will go to the left hand side which is the manual process. It will be allocated to the product uh, team, production allocation. People will, you know, uh, uh, break the whole thousand records and allocate to people, uh, uh, small, small people, and then it will be production batch, and then again be allocated to people. There is a, you know, uh, uh, multiple patterns here going forward and backward, and then finally it will be given to the QC uh, section. The QC checks it, and then there is a QC batch process uh, business logic here. Again, it will be routed to the client, and finally the client checks the, you know, whole process. So this is a, a process which generally happens in a BPO process. Uh, here we have an automated, uh, uh, you know, a condition check, and then it is routed, manual process, routed again. It is again a manual process, and finally go to QC check. Here, in in any kind of activity, there could be two possibilities. One, either the business logic can run on a, uh, a SQL server at a store box, or there could be business logic return in a C-Shop by a developer. So there, there could be two possibilities of business logic. So both the, you know, uh, activities can be returned by using the Celosis framework. And other, other, and the other important thing could be a single workflow can be broken into multiple sub-workflows and on the runtime, on the fly, and each sub-workflow can be called by the parent workflow and finally they can execute and give a final output to the customer. This is also possible. And integration of business rule engine into the workflow, it, it is another beauty of Celosis workflow engine, uh, you know, thing. Okay. So, uh, then we are running out of time. Let's see uh, quickly how to create. Sure, sure. Because okay. we need to give now some minor purposes. Sure, sure. Okay. So we quickly uh, wrap up. Now we have, uh, uh, as I said before, there could be two kind of activities. Either it could be DLL activity, which is nothing but a C sharp class, and there could be SP activity, which is here. Uh, the whole logic runs in a SQL Server environment. So first, let's see what is uh, DLL activity. So in the DLL activity, there are certain steps which has to be given when you inherit an interface which is given by Celosis framework. I activity is an interface which gives you the implementation. You have a, a, a can start method 
and then execute can complete complete and then expire so these are the five steps for any activity so the can start will contain the business logic to check whether this activity can be started because activity has pre process pre pre activities and post activities so pre activities have to hand over some result set to the the next activity so the can start method will check whether the previous activity has given any output for for me so that i can start similarly the execute execute uh, method which will actually contain the whole business logic for this particular activity so all your uh, you know uh, triggering email or calling a web service logic has to come into the execute and then this once this gets over and this will call the can complete complete and has expired so the can complete checks whether i can close this activity so let's say uh, i want to i have an leave accrual management as an employee i will send the leave request to my immediate manager but again i do need to create or i do need to request uh, the leave request from my superior also so there could be two validation or uh, uh, you know approval has to get uh, before the leave you now given to the employee so i have to get both the uh, approval so here i can check the can complete method can check whether both the people have given approval to this guy so that the, the whole activity can be closed or it will be expired after some days if i if i apply for leave today it has to be uh, uh, you know uh, uh, given back to me within two days if not the whole logic or the whole activity has to expire in stop closing so this that that is what will come in the has expired so this is the whole structure of creating a simple workflow based on the gls a simple activity i'm sorry so here again we have a sp activity which is again a class which will call the store proc which is type in the sql server or azure wherever we host the application so here it calls the connection string and it executes the store proc and it takes again can complete null has expired and it also return back the parameters uh, what are the inputs that we have to give to the store proc as well as what what will be the output that will be returned back to the store proc for this activity so uh, for any activity and any workflow we have some activity definition that we have to define and uh, the task actor the task actor is nothing but the manual interference within the workflow that we also need to define here and the workflow definition the workflow definition actually contains the workflow model the work, the definition id and each workflow is separate for each tenant the tenant id has to be defined the filter id has to be given so this this is the basic structure to create a small workflow activity uh, any question so please raise your hand and post your question on the question box so that we can answer thank you yes so So uh, we have five more minutes. If there are any questions, we can answer them today. Uh, please feel free to. Uh, uh, we of course we will be posting this webinar video shortly uh, in our website and maybe or in our in YouTube and give you the link so that you can go through that or share it with other people. And uh, we do conduct one-to-one uh, -one deep dive sessions uh, with. Uh, with uh, interested customers if you if you would like to understand more about business rules workflows on a one to one basis discuss your uh, uh, your specific uh, business application and how that can be done uh, using the solo saas uh, engine or if you also want to understand other other components of solo saas uh, the texelo platform framework you could ask for a deep dive session with our technical team we normally spend anywhere between 16 minutes 90 minutes if you are free we can even spend 2 hours uh, really taking you through the uh, uh, deeper into the uh, capabilities of the framework and, and the various uh, components that are available you can register for it in our website 
or send us an email and we can schedule it for you. Uh, one more minute. Yeah. Yeah, there is a question from Chuck. How do you deploy updated developer logic? Must you redeploy to entire application? Yes, if, if, if there is a change in the code, yes, the entire, uh, the, the, uh, that part of the application uh, binary alone has to be redeployed, not necessarily the entire application, but wherever the code has been changed, it's our project, the code has been changed, it has to be redeployed. If the developer is making some changes in the underlying business logic, but the, the whole design uh, approach of the application should be such that, that is part of the requirement uh, definition in terms of what part of your application needs customization by your customers and what part is likely to remain fixed for a long period of time. So you keep that hard code them and try to externalize as much as possible so that it can be configured by the customers. Uh, uh, we, we have this policy particularly when you do multi-tenant applications or for SaaS or for any other multi-tenant applications. The, the thumb rule is always externalize it, keep it as a metadata, store it separately, allow the customer to customize. Now, why normally people don't uh, do that is because too much of configuration for a customer is also very scary. You know, every customer cannot configure so many things uh, to start using the system. Uh, so there we have what is called as a tenant uh, configuration templates where you could externalize most of your configuration even if it is very complex, set it up once and put, create a template of configuration for tenants and that is the default setup or default configuration right from the UI reports to business rules and workflows and then that, that, is, that is inherited by all the tenants whenever they are provisioned. But then that part, some parts of it which are to be changed by individual tenants can be changed. So that, that kind of tenant, subtenant hierarchy is also supported. So our recommendation is to the extent possible, don't um, keep things to be changed by the developer on the code level because the multi-tenant application that is live and being used by thousands of customers, it's, 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 it's very important to um, avoid the code level changes frequently. But if it is unavoidable, yes, you can do it and then deploy that part again. And uh, I want to clarify one more thing here, Ram. So, uh, as far as yeah. the workflow and the business rule is concerned, it is completely isolated from the, the base application, which is the multi-tenant business logic application. So, if there is any rule change or if there is any workflow activity, a new activity inclusion, I don't think there will be an absolute, you know, uh, complete application deployment once again. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, just the, the, just the uh, new activity alone has to be updated. Exactly. Any other questions? I think we will then um, thank you for your time. I think we have reached the end of the uh, webinar today. Um, please feel free to contact us if you have any other questions. We will be very happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you for your time.